Hey everybody, welcome to Tutor Terrific. Today I've got another physics video for you in Unit 1. This is Lesson 4. We're going to be looking at compound unit conversions today, and I'm going to give you an introduction to the idea of estimation. We're doing a lot of estimation as physicists. So let's get started. So I want to just practice. The last video, Lesson 3, we really looked at a lot of single unit conversions, and so I just want to practice some more. I have three here. Remember that we are using the factor label method. We start with the units we have and um, we then multiply that by a conversion factor with the units I want on top and the units I had originally on bottom. Thus canceling those units I had and getting to units I want. And this works if you have multiple linking units um, involved in your factor label method. Everything will cancel except your desired unit. So let's look at 1.4 times 10 to the 3 kil kilometers. I want to convert that to feet. Well, there's many steps I need to do in order to make that happen. Um, first, kilometers needs to be converted to the standard unit of meters. And so that's done by um, multiplying by 10 to the 3. I have 10 to the 3 meters on top and 1 kilometer on bottom. That's a prefix conversion factor that cancels the kilometers and turns it into meters. Then I'll go from meters to centimeters because I have a conversion factor from centimeters to inches. So I will then put meters on bottom in the next step and centimeters on top. I know that one centimeter gives me 10 to the minus 2 meters using my prefix table that I showed you a couple lessons ago. Then if you're forgetting how to get from inches to centimeters, I have a huge chart over here for you and we'll go to the length section of this chart and you can see that one inch equals 2.4 excuse me, 2.54 centimeters, and they put exactly there for some reason. In case somebody was doubting that, it is exact. So, one inch on top, 2.54 centimeters on bottom, so centimeters cancel. Then, I'm going to convert from inches to feet, the last step. And I know that there are 12 inches in one foot, so I'll put 12 on bottom with the inches. All of these linking units cancel, including the units I had originally, and my final units will be feet. Specifically, if you round to the proper sig figs, you get 4.6 times 10 to the 6 feet. That's a lot of feet. Considering that the Earth's radius is about 6,380 kilometers, man, there's millions of feet as you go through the Earth to the other side. Wow. All right. Let's convert one year to minutes. Okay? Pretty straightforward, after all. Um, one year, we need to go to days first because I know that there are 365 days in one year. So put 365 days on top and one year on bottom. Then convert that to hours, because there are 24 hours in one day. And then convert hours to minutes, 60 minutes in one hour. So all those linking units, make sure years cancel, days cancel, and hours cancel, and you're left with just minutes on top. Now, I can only put one sig fig. I know from the song, 5,000... 525,600 minutes. I know that there are that many exact minutes in a year, but I wasn't very accurate with my year. It could be one year, it could be up to one and a half years. I only have one digit there. So I can only round this to one significant figure. In scientific notation, that would be 5 times 10 to the 5 minutes. That's as accurate as I can be. That's how numbers are treated in physics. Lastly, 0.72 gallons converted to milliliters. Okay, that's interesting. Um, we haven't done a lot of volume units yet, and I haven't even told you what the SI unit of volume is. However, we have uh, this conversion to do. Now, uh, you might need to look at this chart because um, if there's a conversion from gallons straight to liters, we'd be set. We'd only have two steps. Then I could convert liters to milliliters. And if you look at the chart down here, voila. One gallon equals four quarts, sure, but it also equals 3.7854 liters. Bingo. That'll be our first conversion factor that we use. As I did here, I converted gallons to 3.7854 um, liters. And so gallons cancel. And then I need to convert liters to milliliters with a prefix conversion. Milli, again, stands for 10 to the minus 3. So 1 milliliter is 10 to the minus 3 liters. The liters cancel. And I'm left with 2.7 times 10 to the 3 milliliters. 
Okay, that's quite a bit. A gallon is quite large. All right, so those are single unit conversions. There are these things called compound unit measurements, such as meters per second or kilometers per hour. We're going to learn many quantities that are in compound units, um, gallons per meter or liters per foot. There are all kinds of ways you can compound units with the slash and the statement of per in quotes. You're going to work with one unit at a time when you do compound unit measurements using the factor label method as you're used to. However, you have to realize that the unit in the denominator, if I have to convert it such as this from seconds to hours, I have to do it upside down so that the conversion factors have their units canceling for the denominator, I'm going to need to convert in a reciprocal fashion. So the unit I want will be on bottom and the unit I'm canceling will show up on top. Let me show you an example of that. What about seven kilometers an hour? I want to convert that, 70, excuse me, kilometers an hour. I want to convert that to meters per second. Kilometers per hour to meters per second is one you're going to do all the time in kinematics. So it's good to get used to it. So I'll start by writing 70 kilometers over one hour like this. Okay, the unit on top, the unit before the slash goes on top and the unit after the slash goes on bottom. Now the next two steps, this first step is to uh, convert the top unit to meters, okay? Normal, everything normal right now, it's a prefix conversion, 10 to the three meters for every kilometer, cancel the kilometers. Next, I wanna convert hours to seconds. I do not put the seconds that I want on top, now I put it on bottom, and I put hours on top so that they cancel. Okay, see that's reciprocal fashion. And um, one hour is 3,600 seconds. I'm starting to uh, truncate the two-step conversion into one because you're gonna use it so many times. One hour is 3,600 seconds. Then you have this calculation to do, and you end up with, in the calculator, your raw answer is about 19.44 meters per second. But you cannot use that answer because you only had one, technically one sig fig to start with, one. And so I can only have one sig fig in my answer. This number would round to 20, or 2.0 times 10 to the one meters per second. You cannot use all the sig figs you want. Please do not forget that. All right, so let's practice with some compound unit conversions, uh, ones that I made up that allow you to use this chart. Okay, one meters per second converted to kilometers per hour. Okay, very similar to the one that was shown on the previous page. One sig fig, one more time, I want some more practice with that. Remember guys, that when we're doing this, we're working with one unit at a time, and we're continuing to use the factor label method, but we're gonna note that the unit in the denominator will be converted upside down in a reciprocal fashion, meaning the units we're going towards are on the bottom. So, one meters per second, one meter over one second. And then I'm gonna convert the meters to kilometers, okay? And so um, I put kilometers on top and 10 to the three meters on bottom, so the meters cancel. So the top unit's finished, it's converted. Now the bottom unit, seconds to hours. So I'm gonna place seconds on top in the next uh, iteration of this factor label method, and I'm gonna put minutes that I want or I'm going towards on bottom. The seconds will cancel, 60 seconds in one minute, then I'm gonna do it again to go from 60 minutes to one hour. I know sometimes I'm doing it in two steps, sometimes in one. You could go back and forth from seconds to hours. Two, minute, two, two steps or one step. And uh, when I multiply one by 60 times 60 and then divide by 1,000, you never need to multiply the ones because they don't change anything, you would get uh, a number close to uh, four, 3.6 to be exact, but I only had one sig fig in my initial measurement, and so I can only have one sig fig in my answer, four kilometers per hour. Next, we're gonna do 32 gallons per hour, converted to liters per second, okay? Gallons to liters will occur first, and I already know what my special conversion factor is down at the bottom of this table. 32 gallons in one hour, well, I'm going to convert that gallons to liters, 3.7854 liters in every gallon. Put gallons on bottom and that number with liters on top. Cancel the gallons. Okay, the top is finished. Now I'm going to do this uh, hours to seconds in one step. 
Notice how I put the seconds on bottom this time and hours on top with the correct conversion factor in here. So it looks like I'm gonna multiply 32 by 3.7854 and then divide by 3,600. And that gives me a number that I will round to two sig figs, scientific notation, 3.4 times 10 to the minus two liters per second. Now this last one here is many steps, many steps indeed. Seven, 1.7 times 10 to the minus four miles per kilogram now, don't ask me where I, I just made that unit up. It doesn't really make a lot of sense. Uh, converted to meters per gram. Okay, miles to meters is quite a few steps. So, we start with miles. We start by writing 1.7 times 10 to the minus 4 miles over 1 kilogram. Notice how I always put the denominator as 1. The per unit, the one on bottom, just gets a 1 next to it. Okay, we start by converting miles to feet because I know that there's 5,280 feet in one mile. That's also on the, uh, the uh, length conversion factors list up here, which you could definitely uh, take a screenshot of this and keep for your records if you wish. Um, so that will cancel miles. Now we're in feet, now we're gonna convert to inches, 12 inches in one foot, cancel the feet, then convert to centimeters, 2.54 centimeters exactly in one inch, so we're gonna cancel the inches now, then we'll go to, uh, using a prefix, we're gonna to go to regular meters from centimeters, 10 to the minus two meters every centimeter. So cancel the centimeters. Okay, finally we got to meters from miles in the numerator. Going from kilograms to grams in the denominator will be one prefix type step. We'll put the old kilograms we had on top this time, and we'll put the grams we want, 10 to the three of them, down on bottom. When we multiply all these numbers on top, divide by 100 and divide by 1,000, we get the following result in sig figs, scientific notation. 2.7 times 10 to the minus four meters per gram. Again, don't ask me how I came up with this unit. All right, good job guys, let's move on. All right, estimation. Now I'd like to introduce this topic by discussing the following thing. Measuring tools have other limits than accuracy. Accuracy we know from a while ago in my lesson two for this chapter, this unit, that um, accuracy is limited. Your ability to be accurate is limited with each measuring device you use. You can improve your accuracy with higher caliber measuring devices, but there's another problem. And I'm gonna illustrate this problem with this story. Let's say you were at Fallen Leaf Lake, the beautiful Fallen Leaf Lake just south of Lake Tahoe. And let's say you wanted to measure the volume of this lake. And let's say you were trying to figure out how to do it, you weren't very uh, savvy, and you decided to get a bucket. And you said this to your friend, hey, let's take this gallon jug and measure the amount of water in this lake by dumping out the water one gallon at a time. And just keep it track, one gallon, two gallons, and then maybe a million years later, we'd finally be done. That's kind of stupid, okay? You'd also get in huge trouble if you were caught doing that uh, repeatedly. Uh, so that's not the best measuring tool for the device. The problem with this issue, this, this problem, is that no measuring device can really do this job. So what we do in this type of situation is estimation. Estimation is the use of logical approximations and mathematical physical experience to answer numerically based questions. We are not measuring with measuring devices. We are, in fact, estimating using logical approximations, using our experience, our mathematics and physics experience to really get a good approximation to the question in a numerical form. So let's say I asked you to estimate the volume of water in Fallen Leaf Lake. I'm gonna give you a little bit of information to get you going. I'm gonna tell you that it's one kilometer across. I know that's not really accurate, but let's just say on average, it's one kilometer across. At its deepest point, it's 66 feet deep. It's not a very deep lake compared to Lake Tahoe. Now I want you to logically approximate its surface first. We need, in order to estimate something like this, to approximate the shape of this lake. What's the cue to that? The fact that we are finding the volume. We're gonna use some geometric formulas if we can approximate the shape of this lake as something. 
what would we then approximate uh, its average depth as? These are two questions we really need to answer if we are going to be able to estimate this. A lot of estimations you'll do in physics involve you approximating obscure or abstract or amorphous shapes as uh, simple geometric shapes. So with this given information, we are going to do that. Okay, so let's start with this. Based on the average depth and the surface shape approximations, such as the average length across the lake is one kilometer and its average, its deepest point is 66 feet, I think of a cylinder. That's what I think of, a, a right circular cylinder. The volume formula for a circular cylinder is the area of the base, which we assume is circular, times the height of the cylinder. Um, that's going to be related to the depth. And the base is pi r squared. So pi r squared h is the volume formula we will use. We need a radius and we need a height for the cylinder. All units that we use must be the same and SI units. You must use SI units. These are all length units, so they all need to be in meters. Okay, what will be our approximation for the radius? It will be exactly half the approximation for the diameter, which was one kilometer or a thousand meters. So our radius will be half of a thousand meters, 500 meters. Also, what are we going to approximate as our average depth? Uh, one good approximation to make for a leg which is kind of like a cone in a way. That's a very rough, rough estimation. You can, you might get a little cringy in this, this uh, process, but realize we're roughing it here. This is an estimation, and it's okay to be inaccurate. You're making uh, the most probable, accurate models of these shapes. And so I'm going to approximate the depth is about half the average depth as about half the deepest depth. Maybe that's not very accurate, but we're going to go with it. 33 feet, and the, the uh, deepest point I said was 66 feet. So I need to convert 33 feet into meters, okay? And it's done by this set of three uh, steps in the factor label method. Convert feet to inches, then convert inches to centimeters, then convert centimeters to meters, okay? Sometimes I would put one centimeter equals 10 to the minus two meters, or I could put one meter equals 100 centimeters, same difference. So I'll multiply 33 by 12 and 2.54, then divide it by 100, and I get approximately 10 meters. What we normally do in estimation when it comes to sig figs is we use one or two at the most, preferably one, because we know we're being inaccurate, so let's not assume we can have all these significant digits in our um, approximations okay so I could round this to two sig figs I'm choosing to round all these numbers to one that I'm actually gonna plug into this formula which I'm ready to do now I just want to show you a picture of what I'm approximating the lake as 500 meter radius 10 meter depth it's about what we're dealing with here I know it doesn't look like this but that's about the same volume based on my estimating prowess and so when we compute this boom 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 pi times the radius squared, 500 meters, times the height, h, we get about 8 million cubic meters. 8 times 10 to the 6 meters cubed. And that's the unit of volume that would arise from meters squared from r squared and times another meter. That would be meters cubed. Again, see how I'm rounding to one sig fig. 8 times 10 to the 6 meters cubed. I'd be there a long time with a gallon jug, for sure. A meter cubed is giant. It's a meter on a side. So think of a cube that's the length that each edge is a meter long. A gallon jug, I'd be there for years, and I'd probably die before I finished. So realize that estimation is super powerful. All right, guys, thanks for watching this video. Lesson five, the final lesson in this chapter is soon to come. Stay tuned. This is for now, Falconator signing out.